on this week's episode of Marketing O'Clock. The standard is no longer the standard, at least when it comes to standard shopping in Pmax. And Google helps people find what they need by making use of the travel feed. All on today's show. Welcome, you are listening to Welcome. Marketing O'Clock. Just stay tuned. Digital marketing news, but let's get specific. Digital ads, SEO, and analytics, social media, and more. Yeah. Pretty much everything that'll make your website perform. With new shows every Friday. Every Friday. We give you the news with sass and puns and definitely high takes. High takes. Thank you for tuning in. Hey. Hey. You know what time it is. What? It's officially marketing o'clock. Settle in, sit back, keep it locked. Hey there, I'm Greg Finn. I'm Julia Matier. And it is officially marketing o'clock. Here on October 25th, 2024. All right. And it's just Julia and I today because Shep decided to go across the pond to go over speak at SMX London. She's given a fantastic presentation. You saw it. I did. It was great. Amazing. So one, good. One of the best I've ever seen. So hopefully if you are in London and attending the show, you didn't miss it. And that Jess was going to make her triumphant return today. But things happen. Things happen. Some um, intestinal struggles <laughs> from being sick. Oh, no. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't say that, but that's what she said. Yeah. I guess like... She's what, doing better now, though, so it's okay. What is the correct name for that? Just like... The stomach stu- bug? The stomach bug, <laughs> something like that. Whatever. But we're excited to have her back here soon. She is back here and working. And our show today is sponsored by a fantastic sponsor. Thank you very much to Ads Visor. That's A D Z V I S E R dot com. They are a connectivity platform and more for your data. They allow you to go choose your data sources, pull it in, connect together, have Google Sheet add ons, Looker Studio add ons allow you to visualize and showcase your data unlike any other tool out there. And I'm going to tell you why it's unlike any other tool, Julia, because that's what you asked. Can't wait. I did ask. (laughs) Um, So one of the things I love the most about this is that the team over at AdsVisor wanted to have roughly 90% is what it says on their site of the functionality of some of these super expensive connector tools at 10% of the price. And so to, to do that, they have unlimited connections from your data sources. So you can have um, connect as many accounts as you need from a data source. You can have unrestricted queries, which is huge. You can um, make as many queries per day as you want. There are continuous refreshes. It's not like a one day thing where you got to wait for the report to update. You and I have reports like that. It's so frustrating. And you have data integration freedom. So you can choose any data source or destination to work with you want to go have something go to Power BI, Looker Studio, your own Google Sheet, whatever you want to do. And it is 100% made in-house in the U.S. here. You're probably thinking that when I tell you this price, that is too good to be true. But I'm going to explain in AdsVisor's words how it's not. You can connect up to three data sources, get it to Looker Studio, get it to Google Sheets, you get unlimited queries, unlimited accounts on that data source, and you get their custom-built GPT, which we're going to talk about. That's $19.99 a month. Wow. So why? That's what I literally have people say, how is it so cheap? Well, I did a little snooping around their website, and I know why. They made a strategic decision not to hire a sales team. It keeps costs down. They're going after inspiration of Tesla's direct sales model, which eliminates the need for salespeople and and, um, dealerships in that case. Additionally, Goo, who helped spearhead this whole thing, is a former software engineer at a Fortune 500 service now and Google. And he's like, hey, this is probably what he's thinking. I don't know exactly what he's thinking. I'm not putting words in his mouth, but hey, let's go help people for once. Like, hey, here we go. (laughs) What a guy. It, it's amazing. And I just want to say, you get those three data sources for nineteen ninety nine a month, you probably think there's a catch. You're like, well, what if I want Facebook, Pinterest, Google Ads, and Microsoft? That's four. Well, you can get five data sources for twenty nine ninety nine wow. a month. Only ten dollars more for two more. That's crazy. I sent my kids to a book fair to get two books for thirty dollars. Great. You get cheap. It's more expensive <laughs> than this. It's wild. So 
If you are looking to make your reports better, if you're looking for better connectivity, go check out adsvisor.com. That's A-D-Z-V-I-S-E-R.com. That's adsvisor.com. A-D-Z-V-I-S-E-R. Thank you so much. All right. And into the main news this week, pretty monumental change with the way that Pmax with a product feed will work with standard shopping campaigns. I'm going to quickly outline how things used to be. Interject if I get anything wrong. You do a ton of e-com, correct? I do. Okay. So in shopping campaigns, you used to be able to set priority level low, medium, or high. And that would kind of dictate what should get the click if you've got multiple things. You might say, I've got a campaign around running sneakers, and I've got a campaign around men's sneakers. And if running sneakers has a higher priority, that and the products in both, it should show to the higher priority. Well, Pmax comes around. You don't get to set priority levels with Pmax. Pmax trumps them all. <laughs> Pmax just eat will eat your shopping campaigns up until this past week. Mike Ryan at Mike Ryan Retail shared over on X. Google is making such healthy choices lately that I'm actually getting worried. Huge update to Pmax. It no longer takes priority over standard shopping within ads account. And there's some messaging there. They say, starting in October, we're gradually launching an update that will change how Performance Max and standard shopping campaigns interact in the auction when they are in the same account targeting the same products. So that's a very important thing. If you've got multiple accounts, you got MCC, it might not work the same. So for these overlapping campaigns, instead of Performance Max automatically being prioritized over standard shopping, the normal auction dynamics will now apply and the campaign with the highest ad rank will serve. It's a little bit different because ad rank, you don't have keywords and things. So there's a mm -hmm. little bit of difference there. Apparently, you can now run Pmax with a product feed alongside standard shopping just in time for the holiday season. Do you think that Pmax is still just going to do way better, though? So we actually got tipped off to this before, um, and I just started running both of them, and it's still choking out standard shopping. Yeah, that's you saw that, what right? I figured would happen. Yeah. 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 So it's like, <laughs> I don't know. And that, um, as of Wednesday the 23rd, uh, uh, Kirk Williams, at PPC Kirk on X asked, Ginny, the ads liaison of Google, is this a new way of interaction? And Ginny had said it's fully rolled out. Mm -hmm. So it still seems to me like Pmax is taking the lion's share because yeah. we're just instantly testing it. But um, I don't know. We'll have to see. And then another funny thing that I thought in the release is it said Pmax will continue to be the most sophisticated AI product to multiply conversions and capture the highest ROI opportunities during the holidays multiply and i just think i'm like i've seen where the placements are <laughs> yeah i've seen how much i'm spending on candy crush <laughs> you're talking about the most sophisticated ai product you need to revamp your word sophisticated and then multiply mm -hmm. multiply is a wide range you can multiply something by 1.001 or you can multiply something by minus two <laughs> and you're doing way worse. It's like, yeah. what are we talking about? <laughs> How about grow or have something like yeah. that? I just thought that was funny. And they did say PMAX campaigns drove a 17% higher row as an AI powered and automated performance campaigns and paid social. So I'm assuming it's like um, Advantage Plus or something. Mm -hmm. about that. But um, this is a welcome change. I love it. Experiment for yourself. If you have standard shopping campaigns you're running now, you add PMAX to it. Um, I'm going to talk about standard shopping in what's hardly working or working hard or I'm going to talk about Pmax with just a shopping feed, rather. But give it a test. See if it works. Let us know. Up next from Google, they're now giving more opportunities to use travel feeds in search ads. So all hotel advertisers can now showcase data such as hotels, prices, dates, ratings, and images in this ad format. Um, they say that since introducing this to a small set of hotel advertisers last year, there's been a 20% increase in click-through rates. Um, and they might expand this past hotels to car rentals and events in the next few months. So this is pretty cool. Hopefully it's helpful. Yeah. Can I tell you what my favorite part was? Yeah. The example. Yeah. I, it was yeah. a great example. You liked it? No. Oh, really? Did you not? I love the name of the fake hotel. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What na what's the name? Hotel du jour back. De jour. Back. Hotel de jour. It's like <laughs> hotel of the day. Don't you like that? Like, we like, what's the soup of the day? What's? What's the soup of the day? Like soup du jour? Oh, that sounds great. I'll have that. Yeah. I've never heard that in my life. De jour? Yeah. Get out of here. Tables. I, I don't go many places. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard of soup du jour? Yes. 100%. Do you like the name Hotel du jour? I do like the name wow. Hotel du jour. I liked it so much. I I went to the, the 
you are out. It's like under <laughs> construction. I was like, we could make like a fun, random like hotel tonight, but hotel du jour is way better. That's actually pretty funny. The other funny thing is in the example that they gave, I think this might be the first time they ever did it. There is an example of a branded search. So the example was hotel oh, du yeah. jour back bay. Yeah. And I saw that and I'm like, this is brutal. You keep like don't showcase how much money you're making off of people already looking for you. Yeah. Like people are gonna look at this and be mad. And be like, <laughs> I don't want this. I want you just to show hoteldejour.com and not have me pay for it. No, literally. That is my choice du jour, you know? <laughs> okay, and there is some big news over in Google Land. Big, big shake up at the top. Prakbar Ravagan, who was the head of ads. Um, formerly head of search as well, is going to be replaced by Nick Fox, a longtime Google executive. And I always think about back to Ed Zertron's article of late. I don't even know why. Time is just. That's, it's me not on. real. Oh. But he had an article called The Man Who Killed Google. We took a lot of time on it last year. And I'm still going to read one of my favorite parts where he was talking about how Ben Gomes was sort of a white knight at Google, really helping to. Um, work on the product, have good results. And this is from Ed Zertron in the article called "Man Who Killed The Man Who Killed Google. Every single article I've read about Gohm's tenure at Google spoke of a man deeply ingrained in the foundation of one of the most important technologies ever made who had dedicated decades to maintaining a product with a, to quote Gomes himself, guiding light of serving the user and using technology to do that. And when finally given the keys to the kingdom, the ability to elevate Google search even farther, he was oh. rat by a series of rotten careerists trying to please Wall Street led by Prakabar Ravagan. Do you know what Prakabar Ravagan's old job was? What Prakabar Ravagan, the new head of Google search, the guy that who runs Google search into the ground, the guy who's currently destroying search, did before his job at Google? He worked at Yahoo. Oh. <laughs> so that was, that was all from the article. And I'll, I'm... I'm Guessing he has sources on that. Yeah. So that was that was just a little backstory. That's and so Ed Zertron came up with a new article after this after this departure. And he's they're saying he's like gonna be an internal technologist or something. That means you're out, mm -hmm. in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. For what it's worth. And so the new post was called Requiem for a Ravagon. And Ed says while Google experienced a recovery in its growth rates and was talking about some downfalls, it took until Q3 2023 to hit double digits again. The reason these numbers are important is that growth drives everything. And Prakabar Ragan drove the most consistent growth engine in the company, which grew 14% year over year in Q1 2024 until he didn't. The context is key to understanding his promotion to chief technologist, a title that is most decidedly not a chief technology officer or any kind of officer at all. It's got a bunch of cool charts in there talking about growth slowing. And I thought this was interesting where he's like, yeah, growth is slowing and it isn't showing signs of returning to the heady days where 17% year over year growth was considered a bad quarter. Google has deliberately made its product worse as a means of increasing revenue, spawning a trend of both remarkable revenue growth and worsening search results that started exactly when Ravagon took the wheel of its prime revenue driver. Okay, and not to quote out too much here, but there's another thing that I just loved. I just, I love his article. Yeah, it makes me so happy. Hilarious. I just feel alive. <laughs> he says, recklessness and desperation begets only more recklessness and desperation. And you'll note that Google's aggressive push into AI followed its dismal Q4 2022 quarter where it nearly fell into negative growth. And when you factor in inflation, it did. And then one last quote, because I have given this analogy over and over and over again on this show. Ed says, if you'll forgive the mixed metaphors, Google has essentially killed its golden goose search and is now in the process of pawning its eggs to buy decidedly non-magical beans. And by which I mean data centers and GPUs with Google increasing its capital expenditures. Like they had something really good. Mm -hmm. They effed it out, mm -hmm. made it worse, and now they're trying to recover. And I am like, for the first time, like actually worried slash encouraged that like search GPT could come in. Mm -hmm. and be, we've talked about it last week with the 
have Google search results getting worse video and people just seeing ads all the time for product, for companies that they're not looking for. That is a bad user experience. Um, and Ed goes on to say that um, Nick Fox, a former McKinsey guy, only worked at two companies. For what it's worth, Barry Schwartz, I believe, met him in an SMX and had nothing but nice things to say about him. So any change, in my opinion, out in, in the ad space is a decidedly better one. And I really hope that they think about the users, both for the search engine and for its ad platform a little bit more with it. So I am positive on this. Nice. Hopefully it goes well. And now for this week's Cool Tool. As a reminder, our Cool Tool segment is not an official endorsement or paid mention. We're simply sharing something we found in our travels that may be of use to our listeners and is really, really cool. This week's Cool Tool is from Mike Rhodes on LinkedIn and is a PMAX placements report. So it seems like it's not available via scripts yet, but when it is, it'll run four different queries on your data and it'll use display data and the new placement view data. Also, side note, you can use this script template to quickly write scripts for just about anything. So it's a good thing to have either way, but it's pretty cool and we hope it works soon. And it's definitely a good thing to keep on hand if you're running PMAX. So we'll have the link in our newsletter and in Discord. So check it out. And you can go get our newsletter on LinkedIn as well. Super easy and comes out every week. Now it's time for this week's take of the week. This is a hashtag fire digital marketing take with extra spice served up for you. We simply deliver the take for your consumption. We give no opinions. We don't influence. You make the call. This week's take of the week comes from the one and only Anthony Hickman. Hickman at Anthony Hickman on X. And he says, Google, just build a brand. Also, Google steals brand to put in headlines and instead show all of your competitors ads. <laughs> and he has an example where there is a sponsored carousel of ads and it says sponsored. AdSquire Google Ads for Law Firm. I'm assuming he did that to get Google Ads for Law Firm in there. That's yeah. I showed. I know what you're up to, Higman. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it has brand name AdSquire Google Ads for Law Firm. And underneath it is clear as day uh, ad for a competitor. Sad. Which it's just criminal that you can use somebody's brand name. Mm -hmm. Say that it's sponsored by this brand name and then have a link to your competitor yeah insane an ad even. yeah it's just, what are we doing now it's time for this week's pew pew lightning round at this point in the show we split up our content into three parts paid organic and social And before we get into the lightning round this week i just want to read a review can we do a new segment yeah it's just, so fun you know i have shop here yeah. Stopping us from doing new segments. We're going to just make Stopping a bunch us. of new segments. And this is called Just Reading a Review. All right. Um, we got a review over on Marketing Clock. It says, my first review ever because marketing a clock is too good to be true. And the review says, hi, I'm a marketing student. This has been my favorite new podcast on the train. The podcast song is absolutely amazing, super creative. The branding of this podcast is just the highlight. Each one of your shows or each one of us has enormous talent. I think they're wrong on me on that. Um, as you discuss topics that you like and dislike, how can things be so technical and so funny? Most importantly, all the topics are very useful and relevant to me. I will support forever and ever. So big thank you. That was Jenny, I believe. Um, we're going to be sending a hat your way. They actually reached out over on Instagram. So um, appreciate any reviews that come through. What's happening in the paid lighting round, Julia? All right. First up for paid, the request competitive quotes button in Google LSAs are causing uncertainty among advertisers about potential hidden costs. So how this works is you, users would click the request competitive quotes button and then they can select multiple businesses for quotes and then users ent enter a message and email address and Google sends the request to all the selected businesses simultaneously. So the issue here is that if people are clicking on this and it's charging each business for these multi quote requests, this could significantly impact the cost per lead and make it hard for advertisers to calculate their true ROI. So Google has yet to say anything about this, but pretty spooky. Because you pay per lead, right? I'll say so. Yeah, it's the right thing to do is say, "We have one lead here. Let's maybe we'll give. A, there's four people that show up here. Maybe we'll cut the cost by four. Right. Or you could go the route of increasing your revenue by four. What do you think is going to happen, Julia? The worst one. 
Next up, Google is testing video-enabled shop ads in search results. So the example is uh, someone looked up shoes and Thursday boots came up and then there's like a little play logo and after your or like icon. And then after you like look at the ad, it says watch and then you can click on it and it'll open a video um, of the shoes. So I don't know. It's pretty cool. I don't know how many people are really like wanting to watch a video when they're looking for something like this, I guess. But still a cool new feature, I think. I wonder how it's implemented. Yeah, I was thinking that too. In the example, it was for Thursday boots, mm -hmm. and it was a very specific product, like yeah. a specific boot. And when you clicked on the video, it was sort of like a general Thursday branded video. So to me, mm -hmm. from the user experience, it's not necessarily going to be something easy or manageable to do from a product standpoint. Yeah. And you need less use a goofy cap cut thing that mm -hmm. they put out. So I'm wondering, could this be Pmax? Yeah, maybe. So I reached out to Ginny, the Google Ads liaison, and I asked, will we be charged if you click to view the ad for that click to view the ad if they don't go to the website? I have not heard back yet, but mm -hmm. stay tuned. We'll report back next week. Google is also renaming automatically created text, text assets to customizations. <sighs> I know. So we all know what these are. They use text from your website, landing pages, ads, and assets to create custom ad copy. Um, this was originally spotted by Thomas Sassel, and he shared it on X. I think it's. I think all the names for it are stupid. I didn't like text asset, and I don't like customization either. It's also not really custom if they're just taking things from what you already have. It's, I know, but it's like that dark pattern. Of yeah. How you get people to opt into this so that you can just write whatever you want and mm -hmm. do whatever you want. Yeah. It sounds better to be like, oh, it's a customization. Yeah. Well, actually... We use this. Yeah. Ads. Yeah. It works better with it, but it just, I feel like d just depends. <laughs> yeah. For PMAX specifically. Mm -hmm. Next from Clicks Marketing, Microsoft has announced impression based remarketing. So this isn't rolled out to every account yet, but it's something new that's coming. So when you create the audience, you can select one campaign or even a single ad group to measure impressions up to 30 days. Side note on that, the default is seven days, so make sure you adjust that um, if you do set it up. But the audience will automatically update as new users see your ads, and you would be able to create as many as you want and select multiple audiences to put into one campaign if you wanted. A few small things to note about this. The list can only be apl applied to audience campaigns, so display native and online video, You'll need, and you'll need at least 1,000 or more in the audience before it's large enough to serve. So just some things to keep in mind, but Still pretty new and not rolled out to all the accounts, but keep an eye out for it. Next from Dario Zanoni on LinkedIn, some meta updates for catalog-based ads. So the first one is a product set expansion. So you can basically opt to have, so basically you can make a product set and then opt to have meta show products that aren't in your product set. I don't know why anyone would ever do that, but you know, whatever, you can. Um, and then dynamic media, if you turn this on, it lets meta decide whether to show images or videos in the ads, which is also basically an option under Advantage Plus. So if you do enable this, there are more buttons that include automatic video cropping and always show videos, so like no images. So just be cautious if you do turn either of these on. Nobody asks for this. Yeah, like they do too much and it's annoying. It's also just, I can't. It's impossible to do anything in there. More from Dario Zanoni on LinkedIn about Meta. They have a new Advantage Plus creative option called Enhanced CTA, which uses AI to pair key phrases from headlines with CTAs in overlays for stories. They also <laughs> have a flexible aspect ratio feature that now allows Meta to display carousel images in different aspect ratios and AI-generated images created by default, though approval is still required. And then the more significant update here is to Commerce Manager's data sources. So you can now have multiple data sources for the same product data, like price or images, and prioritize which source updates each attribute. So for example, Images can be updated from a partner platform like Shopify, and if no value is found there, the system will use the value from the data feed, and then sale prices can be updated from a data feed, but you can prioritize manual input if that's available. So I feel like that's kind of a better update than the rest of them. At least it could be helpful, but... Yeah, I mean, I like that you get to approve the AI stuff, but my yeah. God, are we this lazy? No, right? Like, Are we this lazy? Are we this bad at our jobs that we yeah. can't even create images anymore well wasn't it like meta's whole goal to just like you say like i yeah, want this and I they're like this. we'll do it all yeah and so we need yeah. somebody to run it right they're just trying to do the most that no one wants but no when everybody's using the same thing you can that's all just like normal text it's all going to look the same like rsa is very homogenous right 
So go hire a designer or a company that does good design and stand out. Mm -hmm. Like if everybody's doing AI and just coming up with ratty images, then mm -hmm. good. Go make a good one. Be yeah. a cat. Go get the rats. Yeah. <laughs> we can talk about rats because Shop isn't here today. Um, okay. And then next from Brom Vanderhalen on LinkedIn, a little bit more for Meta. They're rolling out quick views to more ad accounts. I actually did like this. Um, basically, you can just create custom filters and save them as quick views to make it easier to filter down the ads manager table based on your most used selections. It's like you could filter it by like top of funnel campaigns that you want to see or like whatever. So love it. It's a good, good feature. Um, and then from Adrian Decker on LinkedIn, Thomas Cell spotted a new YouTube ad with a swipeable product carousel. Uh, it's pretty cool. He's looking for Prada sunglasses, or that's what the ad was. So, hmm. I bet he'd look great. He should change that little image of himself that he puts on every LinkedIn post to him and Prada's. Yeah. Are you a Prada sunglass person? I'm too poor for that. <laughs> <laughs> Pmax has arrived in Google Ads grant accounts. So, the, and this is a new first new campaign type in 20 years in this program, which I just thought was like kind of cool. Yeah. Um, we're not sure if it's rolled out to all the accounts yet, and the Pmax ads are search only right now, but. From what we've seen, it seems to be working well from the people who have it. So cool update there. That's great. You got to put people on the same playing ground. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then last from Jenny Marvin on LinkedIn, a little holiday gift, um, some new product updates rolling out globally. The first is video enhancements using Google AI to create more options for your videos to show on YouTube inventory by flipping and or shortening them. Next, Imagen 3 um, can now generate high quality visual assets for Pmax Demand Gen app and display campaigns. Shareable previews of Pmax ads are rolling out and now expanding to Pmax campaigns with product feeds and travel goals. Uh, new experiments are coming for Pmax. And as Greg talked about earlier, we, they have changed how Pmax and standard shopping campaigns interact. So thanks, Jenny. Yeah. I like any addition of Pmax. A lot of these I don't think are going to move. The yeah. But, you know. And even their AI stuff. They don't do like humans. They do very specific stuff. Just go use real AI or a mm -hmm. higher designer. Yeah. We've said multiple times on the show, you want to look for somebody who's a partner. You want to look for somebody who isn't just selling you something. Well, good. Advisor doesn't even have a sales team. So you're starting in the right spot. Also, they have a ton of resources, including pre-made dashboard templates with instructions of how you can hook up and sync everything and are giving them away for free. They are Looker Studio reports, as I said, and you can go through, get a Facebook ads template, a Google ads template, TikTok. Microsoft, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Pinterest. So there's also insights templates for Facebook. I'm just saying you want people who are actively seeking to help you. I feel like that's what we try to do on the show. And that's what Advisor is trying to do for you. Make it a reasonable, affordable price, help you have success, and you will keep your clients. This is the opposite of what we talked about earlier with, with the Ed Zertron article. They are trying to make your life easier, and that is what you should look for. Um, I would highly recommend it. Again, it is under $20, change back on a 20, and less than the cost of two books at a Scholastic Book Fair um, in elementary school. So go check it out over at AdsVisor, A-D-Z-V-I-S-E-R.com. That is AdsVisor, A-D-Z-V-I-S-E-R.com. You won't regret it. And in the organic news this week, Bing Webmaster Tools is gaining recommendations. Google had uh, announced this. Haven't really seen it rolled out across everything yet. Um, so you get recommendations. I actually like recommendations from this side of things because from an ad side, you're kind of getting recommendations from the people that are making money off of you and make money off of you spending more. So in this case, you might see, hey, you've got duplicate title tags or something like that. I love it. And then you only had six months previously, and it's going to move to 16 months of data in Webmaster Tools. Also, YouTube citations in the Google AI overviews have surged 300%, wow. according to Bright Edge. And apparently, the citations grew 310% since August and 200% since September. So more and more, Google is showing things that will result in roughly zero click stuff. I mean, it might nice. go to YouTube, but <laughs> Google owned and operated. So you saw this coming. Once once AI overviews get good, then they will start to get bad. 
Mm-hmm. But right now it's like a bell curve. We're still yeah. bad. Yeah. And then it might get good. And then it's, really then it's gonna get bad. Yeah. But we're so bad right now. Yeah. Can't wait for the good two days we have. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In addition, from Search Engine Land, Search GPT is giving brands 4x more referrals versus perplexity and cloud. You big cloud user? Cloud? Yeah, never even heard of her. Um, it's still in limited beta, but it, apparently it's sending more referral traffic to brands than the established generative engines like Perplexity, which is pretty wild. That's why I think there should be some fear over at Google. I hope so. Mm-hmm. You need to do better. They won't. Give them the old Joey Swole there, right? Um, and in a new, can we do a new segment? Yeah, another one. Sponsored by Advisor. Okay. Okay. This is called... This is fine, ants. And Google AI is inaccurate of four in forty three percent of finance related searches. <laughs> there were only a hundred and like one searches that this person I'm did. Still, but in, in I'd say there's probably some bias to the person doing the article because they're very in the weeds of yeah. finance. Um, but it was over, I believe, on the collegeinvestor.com. and they went through, showed the queries that they put out. And if the verdict was misleading or like wrong. And for example, one of the questions that they they typed in and got an AI overview for was, can you use a 529 plan for a Roth IRA? And Google gave the wrong answer. Um, the college investor says, this answer completely ignores that one third of the states, including large states like California, New York, do not allow this. Unlike the elementary school elementary school query, this answer does not include the exceptions in the bullet points. So you get an answer that doesn't work for a third of the country. That's like so scary. This would ruin my life if I was looking up something like this. I know. This I don't is, know anything. This is like the <laughs> thing where it's like for years you've been priding yourself on EEAT and yeah. everything. And then your money and your life stuff being so valuable. Yeah. Then you launch the thing. Mm-hmm. You're saying, hey, I've got kidney stones. What do you do? Drink urine. <laughs> and then he, here's a lot of bad financial answers. Yeah. Just slowly trying to kill us. <laughs> it's just like, these are the two things. Like, these are yeah. the main things that you said are important. Insane. And you're getting it wrong 43% of your time in your money or life categories. Yeah. What am I missing? Nothing. They just... We'll have those two days of go. We <laughs> can't wait for those two days. <laughs> like, we'll have a party. It's a <laughs> countdown. We're like, oh, we think we're here. <laughs> All right. Google search is dropping the site link search box. You may have seen this when you search for a website. And let's say I search for Nike. I don't know why I keep talking about Nike now. But you would see search within Nike.com. Oh, my God. <laughs> that is a big spike. I'm going to, like, actually freak out. <laughs> Okay, let me get back to it. There was a spider that just dangled down through the lights and was glimmering right in our faces. Scary. Tables, if you got a picture of our faces, it's probably, I bet Julia made a great face. (laughs) Throw it up on the screen right now. Anyway, apparently Google is getting rid of the search box. So you could kind of do like an internal search within the site to get more information. And Google said that um, over time, we've noticed that usage has dropped for that. All right, from Higman. Just a quick update. He says, my new thing is when we can update all of our terms email, I just control F and look for artificial. He saw something from CallRail. They updated their terms. So if you are concerned about AI being used, that might be a good thing. Instead of opting in to everything, just checking it out if you are in a highly regulated industry. All right. From Glenn Gabe or from TechCrunch by way of Glenn Gabe, let's say, mid. this is a wild one. I really want your take on this. Okay. Midjourney is planning to release an upgraded web tool that lets users edit any uploaded images from the web using generative AI. I think Midjourney is the best image creator out there. So you will be able to have a photo of somebody mm-hmm. and say modify. Perfect. <laughs> so just what we all need. <laughs> I just don't think this is going to be used. For the most savory things yeah. that they, <laughs> across the board, there might be some people being naughty with it or oh, making deep fakes. I don't know. <laughs> Terrible. But allegedly, um, there it's only for a subset of the current community, and there's going to be increased human moderation. Apparently, mm. there's going to be increased human altercation. Yeah, that's no, what's going to happen. Increased human modification. <laughs> yeah. 
and is as well as new, more advanced AI moderators to attempt to prevent use. Um, TechCrunch went on to say there are risks to releasing these type of editing tools without adequate safeguards in place. They could facilitate copyright infringement on a massive scale or promote the spread of misleading deep fakes. Yeah, it seems just like a bad idea. I'm going to manipulate a photo of you just covered in spiders. I will go to the hospital. <laughs> I'm going to have shop laying on a bed of rats. <laughs> you was with the hospital last week. Yeah, I did. <laughs> like, I pumped my head. We were like, are you go go to the emergency, go to the doctor. What, what did they give you? A Canadian tuxedo? CT. Yeah. yeah. Was it? Canadian. CT. Okay. What's, can you explain for the audience what a um, Canadian is? I know who the president is. Um, I know what day it is. See, you, do you say C, CTE? CT. Oh, okay. CT. But <laughs> CTE is like. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So they just ask you questions? Yeah, they just ask me questions and like push on my hands. And then he laughed at me and said, I promise you're fine. <laughs> okay, so head better? Yeah. Do you think Canadians are offended that that's the nickname here in the U.S. is like the Canadian See, CT? No. I feel like that's a better idea. Okay. <laughs> I feel like we should be offended that it's not named after us. <laughs> All right. And with uh, some other kind of deep fakey type news, YouTube is rolling out new info tags uh, based on how a video was created. They're trying to combat some of those deep fake content. Um, and you will see within an image that it says how this content was made and if it was captured via like a camera on your phone and they'll say captured with a camera. So if somebody edits it, hypothetically, you'd be able to check it back out. They didn't just take it from the phone. They went through and they added the spiders onto Julia and they had her dancing around with the spiders in a big web. Great. Yeah. Well, Would you ever get a tarantula? Literally never. ChatGPT has surpassed Bing in site popularity. According to SimilarWeb, they're achieving 3.1 billion visits in September with 112% growth. That's pretty wild that it's in the top just website traffic out there, which is why I do think it could be a competitor, especially if you okay. go to ChatGPT, use the app, and guess what? They have search GBT included in there. I'm really hoping to see a shakeup. And from Glenn Gabe at Glenn Gabe on Twitter, he says, I'm seeing a 67% decrease in search visibility for the Fortune Recommends category, as Barry Schwartz at Rusty Brick on X said. Did Google penalize Fortune Recommends over the site reputation abuse policy? Similar to what we saw with Fortune or Forbes Advisor. So Fortune Recommends now is getting hit allegedly in the same way Forbes Advisor was. We talked about this before, but like Forbes would be out there saying, here are the best CBD gummies for 2024, bro. It's like, you're supposed to be a wealth in economy magazine. Right. What are we doing? Good. They should do more of it. Yeah. All right. Can we make a new segment? Yeah. Another one? Yeah. Let's <laughs> we'll make a lot today. <laughs> this new segment is called, You Can't Spell Hate Without AI, which is technically correct. Uh, the Dow Jones and New York Post are suing AI startup Perplexity, alleging a massive copyright infringement. Apparently, they had sent a document back in the summer to Perplexity and got no answer on it. And they now have a cease and desist notice demanding they stop using the content, asserting that it's infringing copyrights. Which I get it, but you kind of also have to do that to Google a little bit. Mm-hmm. All right. And then going full pesto mode over here, uh, Penguin Random House is amending its copyright notice to globally prohibit the use of books for training AI. The notice will now be included in new titles and reprints. New segment? Yeah. Okay. This new segment is called Fair Question. Okay. Fair Question. Mm -hmm. Okay. This comes from Mike Futia at Mike Futia on X. Danny Sullivan has not tweeted a single time in October. He hasn't engaged meaningfully on Twitter since August 8th, which was two and a half months ago. Danny's role is, quote, to, to, quote, engage with the outside community to hear feedback on how search can be improved. The current state of Google search is the worst it's ever been, and public liaison is nowhere to be found. Where's Danny? Fair question. <laughs> fair question. Fair question. Do we know if he's alive? <laughs> he's alive. He's doing well. Hopefully see him out at uh, Bright Nessio. Okay, let's let's just tag team the social. Sounds good. I'll go first. So first from social, 
A survey from Morning Consult data reveals that Gen Z heavily relies on influencers for information, and data shows that 22% of Gen Z follows more than 50 influencers. Um, They also said 57% or 3 in 1 Gen Z also said that they would be ready to become an influencer if they're given the opportunity, which I just thought that's funny because, like, duh. But, like... Yeah. You know, everybody would. Yeah, right? (laughs) I don't you know if you've millions ever... of dollars to do basically nothing. Yeah, it's like every one of these like reality shows are just trying yeah. to get more people to follow. It's like a big yeah. influencer. Okay, new segment. Julia, do you follow more than 50 influencers? I don't think so, but I probably follow like 20. I think it depends. It feels on... like a lot. What you call an influencer too, you know? Like I follow also... like people that help you with soccer training. I yeah. can call that an influencer. I follow people that are bladesmiths. I might call yeah. that an influencer. Like if you follow a marketing clock, is that influencer? I don't know. Yeah. You could, Definition yeah. could be like Different. very wide. Speaking of creator marketing, there was a white paper on the state of creator creator marketing trends from creatoriq.com. In the most integral social media platforms for creative creator marketing in 2024 for brands, it's Instagram with 30%. For agencies, Instagram is still at the top, 28%. But TikTok is right behind 27%. They're the big two, I would say, out of all this. Mm-hmm. Um, YouTube is lagging behind um, for agencies, only 15% um, for the intro that got the vote for integral marketing platform. Um, and then the most commonly used social platforms for creator, creator marketing are Instagram at the top, followed by YouTube uh, for brands and TikTok for agencies. Next, according to eMarketers report, Gen Z adults spend more time on TikTok Instagram and Snapchat than any other generations. TikTok is most used by 18 to 34 year olds with an average 57 minutes spent per day. 25 to 34 year olds tend to spend most time on Instagram with 29 minutes per day. So I looked at my daily averages to see where I fit in. And you're Gen Z. I am. Okay. I was proud of these. My TikTok daily average is seven minutes. That's it? Yeah. And my Instagram's 14. I'm just like never on my phone apparently. Is this just like a one week time frame? Yes, it was last week. Okay, so this when is why I had doing, a concussion. <laughs> no, this is why you're because you had a concussion. You couldn't look at light. You had to go get the Canadian CT, and you got a brand new cat, which I'm sure That's also took your time. Away. Yeah, I probably spent my entire time on my phone on my camera taking pictures of him. Okay, so. let's look at your camera time. Like, what if it's like can an I? hour? I don't know if you can or not. Um, we'll question: The whole thing. You got a new cat? I did. Boy, cat. We we're gonna have a gender reveal party on the show, but. It, you said it it's was, a boy. <laughs> you're like, it's like clearly a boy. Yeah. Okay. So nod to him. Um, additionally, what is the name of your cat? Depends who you ask. He has a few. Wait, does it, did it pre come like a, a pre built name? No, he, he was homeless. So he did not have a name. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, his, his government name is Frankie. That's what the vet calls him. Um, is it on his birth certificate? Yes, it is on his vet okay. records. It's Frankie. He also goes by Spice. That's what my family calls him, or Furia. Furia. So, it's got a few. That's from okay. Soprano. So, I like Frankie. Yeah, it's good. I thought you were going after like Furiosa. No. All right, new segment here called "You Can't Spell Hate Without AI," the social media edition segment. <laughs> As X is gearing up to change its privacy policy, allowing for user data sharing with third-party collaborators, effective November fifteenth. This update. Hence, at a model akin to Reddit, where outside companies would pay for to access user data. Um, Reddit and Google, in for example, Google pays Reddit sixty million dollars yearly to get that data. And uh, X is also tightening its terms of service with harsher penalties for those scraping uh, tweets or posts, whatever you want to call it. Uh, there's a new section called liquidated damages, and X is stating that if you access over one million posts in a day. That could result in a fifteen thousand dollar penalty. Wow! I just think like, isn't Barry Schwartz kind of close to that number? I feel like he hits a million a day. He hits <laughs> a million a day. And then also staying into this AI section here, Google is or Reddit is rumored to be in discussions with many other companies for data licensing that includes Microsoft. The CEO of Reddit said that they are transparent and don't like the sound of a closed internet. Just, I just think it's funny, like. They made this thing for like community and ads. Mm -hmm. Like all the money is just like sitting there with us and our content and our data and Mm -hmm. everything we're putting out there. And they're just like, oh, let's just go show more ads and make money off them. Oh, let's just sell everything they just said. Yeah. Instagram is experimenting with Reels performance tips in stream. So they have little notes on the Reels that explain why the clip is performing well in the app. 
and then you can click on the note and it'll give you more insights into the most impactful element elements of each specific reel so uh some examples of stuff the notes say where most views were longer than three seconds and strong hook kept people watching how do they know that right i think they're just like making things up about like why your reel could be doing well but i don't know maybe it's helpful we'll see the more insights thing might be helpful. Last for social, social media today shared an infographic from Giraffe Social Media. That's an overview of some of the key factors that drive the TikTok algorithm. So most of the driving factors I mentioned are user interaction, video information, demographics, and interests. They also have pro tips for maximizing engagement. Most of it's pretty straightforward stuff, but if you're looking for ways to improve your TikTok presence, it's definitely worth checking out. And that brings us to our real life segment straight out of our accounts and into your ear holes. It's time for Working Hard or Hardly Working, where we talk about what's going on in our IRL work, good, bad, or otherwise. Working hard for me this week is LinkedIn ads. I feel like normally stuff doesn't like do great on there, but lately the campaigns we've had running have been doing really good. So I'm just happy to see that. And yeah. All right. And for me, I'm going to go with Pmax, but the smart shopping flavor. And what I mean by that is only a product feed we're actually doing like a decent amount of testing just between, you know, having full assets in there, headlines, descriptions, images, videos versus smart shopping version. That's just what we call it. Um, does really great. The smart, the just product feed only version of it. And it's just so easy to set up. It's like so easy to roll out. You don't mm -hmm. need to, especially if you have like a lot of segmentation going on, it's just so much easier. So um, if it's easier and the results are better, like I'll take it. Yeah, really. Now it's time for this week's I See Why Am I. I See Why Am I, people. This is something you just might not have seen. Maybe something that you overlooked, but you shouldn't have. I See Why Am I, people. Alfred Simon shared on X a rarely mentioned Google Ads performance lever budget changes. So he said he lowered the Pmax campaign budget by 25% and he saw his conversion rates in ROAS increase by 40%. So just kind of another good reminder to... Google's telling you to just raise your budgets all the time. Maybe don't and think about things. We'll see. I also kind of want more context, well, yeah. Alfred, because yeah. if it's on max conversion value, that makes total sense. Yeah, you're that's saying true. you got to lower the budget to work harder, which mm -hmm. is not really. I mean, that's more bidding type, mm -hmm. but it, it's a good point. People think yeah. max max conversion value is the same as T row as. Um, I believe I put a video, a tutorial out on the Marketing Glock channel as to why it's not. Mm -hmm. But I'll go go check on that. All right. And we're bringing back an old segment. Wow. WTH this week. I saw this. And this isn't news. This is Furioso. What is the name of your cat? Furio. Furio. This, is, this should make you Furio okay. when you hear this. <laughs> um, Thomas Assel spotted it uh, on LinkedIn. And there is a message which appears to be from a Google Ads rep or is allegedly from a Google Ads rep. I know Ginny did say she was reaching out to find out more. I said, hi, this is Blank from the Google Ads support team. Today, I optimized your search campaign and improved the ad strength for each ad. Great. An immediate <laughs> red flag should be going off in your head. Who cares about ad strength? I don't care about ad strength. You shouldn't care about ad strength. Also, just today, I optimized your search yeah. campaign. Like, what? So... They said in an order list, unpin the headlines. Uh, two, added more images from your asset library. Three, corrected the business name and added the logo. Oh my God. Like you don't know what your business name is. Right, yeah. Four, added three new headlines to two of your ads. Now the ad strength for each is marked as good. This will help boost ad performance, making them stronger, more informative, and more competitive insane ad strength has nothing to do with your success mm -hmm. it has to do with how often you can be displayed that is a metric for that really what matters if you have something that's pinned and you have images at work that are driving conversions at an affordable price even if you have to pay a little bit more for them that is what matters to your business not this not ad strength and not having somebody go through and implement on your behalf without you asking. And we're going to add another one in here too. This oh, wow. is from Maggie yeah. Roberts over on LinkedIn. And Maggie had a whole bunch of different helpful elements here. So I'd go follow her owner and founder at Maggie Roberts. Um, great post, but I'm just going to do the WTH part. Run Google ads, they say. 
What's the worst that can happen, they said. This is all coming from Maggie. Mm -hmm. Well, for this business, it was a click at a CPC 16 times higher than their estimated top of page bids from a bot. The example here was that she was running a target CPA campaign with a goal of $375 for an acquisition. Mm -hmm. Daily budget's $420. Mm-hmm. Take a guess at how much the click cost was for this term. Two hundred. Five hundred seventy-four dollars, Julia. That is more than the daily budget, and that is Crazy. near two x of what the CPA is, and it went to a bot. Insane. According to Maggie. Yeah. She get her money back. It's almost <laughs> like it's almost like people should have been ranting and raving about the fact that smart bidding and letting the ad platform control your bids is a bad idea. Why isn't anybody doing that? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> why aren't they? That's all I do. Now it's time for our must read marketing article of the week. An article so advanced, so in depth, so detailed that we simply cannot cover it in its entirety on today's show. This week's must read marketing article of the week comes from Ben Vignon over on Search Engine Land. And he has, I think, a good testing methodology that he uses, that he's sharing to the world. Not everything we do here is 401 classes. This isn't even a 101. This might be a 102 class, but it goes through the insight that he uses in doing PPC testing. He has things like a step-by-step PPC testing framework where he develops a thesis, or I we call them hypothesis. Maybe it's thesis. I don't know. Um, selecting key areas for testing, setting up those tests, how to do it conducting custom or advanced tests that can go beyond Google ads, analyzing results and iterating continuously. And he even goes through talks about how to test across a video, search, shopping campaigns, the whole nine yards, just a very well thought out article. If you want to see how other people do testing, you might learn something from it. Go check it out over on Search Engine Land. Thank you, Ben. And now onto our playlist of curated songs to work to, which you can find over at playlist.marketingandclock.com. What are you adding to the playlist this week? I'm going to go with Mount Joy, Rearrange Us. Okay. And I'm going to add Teardrops by Liam Payne because I'm depressed and unwell. So Teardrops? Yeah. Oh, he's he the guy that... He passed away. Yeah. I'm heartbreak. upset. Yeah. yeah, it is. When I saw the name Teardrops, it just made me think uh, of mm-hmm. Frankie Motown Brown. Okay. From Detroiters. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Ocean of Tears. I was just watching this. This past week, it's the dumbest show. And if you want like stupid content, I send you a bunch of clips. Mm-hmm. And you're <laughs> the world's dumbest clips. But there's explaining a story about Ocean of Tears. It's like, I just had this thought what if a man cried an ocean of tears? I'm like, that's the story behind the song? He's like, yeah. You see, the ocean is made of tears. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta watch it. You would love it, Julia. I cannot. Have you watched it? I think you should leave yet. The clips you sent me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like them? Yeah, they're funny. They're all funny. I just kind of forget about it. Yeah. Understandable. All right. That does it for today's show. It is now officially not marketing a clock. Thanks for listening. We miss you already. And we can't wait to see you next week. Thanks for listening to Marketing O'Clock. If you're looking for more information on today's topic, head over to marketingoclock.com slash newsletter to receive every single article we covered. We share the news as it breaks in our Discord community. Head over to community.marketingoclock.com to join. Welcome to this week's Shoot in the Heck, where after our famous Friday news show, we don't talk about marketing anymore. We just shoot the heck. And this week, Julia, we're playing everybody's favorite game. Oh, what is that? A game from straight from your brain. Wow. You came up with this. I did. Sort this, of. <laughs> yeah, so this is some in an oma, um, ode to Shep, let's say, London trivia. And just for the record, Julie and I, have you ever been to London? I have. I've really? Been you, parade. You've been to London. Okay, yeah. I've never been. So you have a distinct <laughs> advantage. Yeah. First question here, which famous clock tower is off- Greg. Big Ben. Whoa. Is often mistaken for Big Ben. <laughs> so I don't know if, All right. if, if I should dock you points there or not. I, I can't know. answer the question. No, it's I have Julia. Like, no. literally not a clue. I think anything wins. Okay. The gray one. I was going to go Little Ben. 
Oh, that's not, not technically correct, but I think the point goes to Julia. It is the okay. Elizabeth Tower. Oh, come on. What river runs through London? That's easy. The Sussex or something. That's so not Greg, right. No, I, that's such I a stupid no, answer. I don't know That's such a stupid answer. I don't even know any river. I'm going to go Thames River. Thames is correct. Oh, oh what? <laughs> I'm only answering in English accents now. Which London museum houses the Rosetta Stone? The Museum of History. Ye old. Oh. Museum de London. You said the London Museum? Yeah, like. Yeah, I'll give that to you. It's the British Museum. They're super close. Museum of? The British Museum. That's what it's called. I got some food trivia here. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, what is the traditional British dish made of minced meat and vegetables? Greg, minced meat and vegetables, <laughs> my lady. <laughs> it's like half like <laughs> Renaissance, <laughs> half. You're going to cry. <laughs> or shepherd's pie. Isn't that right? Yes, that yeah. is correct. Look at this. That is a little nod to Shep. Oh, a Shep. good yeah. washing <laughs> tables. What dish is made of combining mashed potatoes with various- Greg, d thou thinks that it might be bangers and mash. Oh my God. Yes, <laughs> that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Greg's running away with it. It's like once you hear, once you hear that once, even. you can't get it out of your brain. <laughs> Which famous street in London is known for its vibrant food scene and diverse Greg, internet? I'm going to go with a head tip to my old pals, John and Paul, and go Abbey Road. Food and what? It, it, like, that's going to help you. You're going to get an answer. Food and what? It's going to magic come your brain. No way. Food scene and diverse international cuisine. So kind of the same thing. Elizabeth Street. Mm. I feel like everything's named after her. Let's do multiple choice for this one. Okay. A, Brick Lane. No. B, Oxford Street. Greg. B. B. <laughs> No, I'm going to give it to Julia. It's Brick Lane. <laughs> Which popular market in London is famous for its street food and Greg. vintage goods? Oxbury Square. Is that right? I just made a word up. Oh. Sound good. I feel like I actually do know the answer to this. That answer. Full in. Mm, no, but Sorry. I think it is like a town. That is, yeah. No, I think, I think the name of this place is, oh. is a town. London. <laughs> <laughs> Incorrect. Any more guesses? Uh, you already said Ox. Uh, Liverpool liquidators. Nope. It is the Camden Market. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Come on. What iconic structure was completed in 2003 and is one of London's most recognized landmarks? The London Bridge. 2003? <laughs> 2003? Maybe they redid it. <laughs> Imagine they just put it out, like when just think, dropped when the think, London Bridge. <laughs> okay, what have people been singing about? Just the, that this thing will finally be built. Listen, when you think of London, what do you think of? The bridge. But Big like, Ben. Okay, I'm going to go the with. The castle. Um, One Direction. Wembley Stadium. <laughs> no, it is the Shard. I don't even know what the Shard is. I've never even heard of that. Me neither. It sounds like a thrift store Chicago bean. Yeah. <laughs> Just like a piece of glass. <laughs> okay. I got one more winner takes all on those tables. What is the name of the annual event in London that celebrates the city's diverse culture and colorful parade? Greg. Oh. Uh, I, Sire, just have seen a dragon in the sky. <laughs> I just feel like I'm just medieval. Yeah. <laughs> you're, medieval. Not, you're so far off. Mm -hmm. Does thou... I say it's the Piccadilly Parade. It sounds sounds quite English. Is it the New Year's Day Parade? No. London Pride. Hmm. The Lord Mayor Show. Hmm. Or Notting Hill Carnival. Notting Hill Carnival. I'm going to go with Selection B, whatever that was about the, the ye old lord of the manor. <laughs> Julia wins. It's Notting Hill Carnival. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> My time in London <laughs> paid off. Great job, Julia. Well, at least we know I've got a fantastic accent. Mm, sure. Let's hear yours. No. <laughs> <laughs> You've offended enough people. All right. And we will see you next week. Settle in, sit back, keep it.